Did you know that there's 15 different plum trees native to North America and we grow five of those 15? They're fruiting right now. We're gonna go check out all five of them. We'll start the video with a conversation about the differences between cultivars and wild plums. Pretty straightforward. And then we'll go sample this fruit. We're gonna take it up a notch. He has slightly different See that ladybug larvae? Bam! Pull the thing down like a monkey. The plum tree has been cultivated for at least 2,000 years, and right now there's about 6,000 different varieties. They're called cultivars. We have two different types of cultivar plum trees here. This is the methylene, and we got the satsuma. They're right next to each other. It's in the category of Japanese plums, they do need to cross pollinate. With all cultivars, the advantage is you generally know when it's going to flower, when it's gonna fruit, what the fruit is going to look like, what it's going to taste like, and other characteristics. The fruit that you get in the store is one of those 6,000 cultivars that humans have developed. Whereas these little ones transitioning over to native trees, they generally are going to be smaller. They're also largely self-pollinating. It's my understanding only the beech plum needs a partner. They grow very tall, they grow very short, they fill niches in our environment, they sucker, so that's awesome for erosion control. Native plums are more adaptable to our climate. They're gonna need less water. And I hope you look into what native plum trees fit your garden. You only need one unless it's a beach plum and then you get two or three. This is the American plum. It grows native in 46 different US states. How adaptable is that? It grows in plant zones from three, which is frigid, three, down to eight, but I bet it grows in zone nine and probably even in zone 10. 19 different Native American tribes use this plant for tools or medicine. It's a very sprawly tree. She'll grow up to 20 feet tall, but she'll probably go 20 foot wide. Native plum trees fruit really vigorously. This girl has been fruiting for at least six weeks. What I noticed in the very first iteration of fruit there was a lot of fruit falling to the ground. Now they're starting to hang on a little better and they're getting redder. Let's look at this one. Lots of sun, this one's a lot redder. Mmm, wow, that's really tasty. Yeah. I have sweetness and a lot less tartness. So I walked over to the other side of her so you get a little idea of perspective. This tree is at least 10 foot wide and I doubt that it's 10 foot tall. And that's indicative of the American plum. It sprawls sideways. That's why it makes for an ideal hedgerow or an ideal like food bank for wild animals. That one plum turned me on. Mm. When you bite into it, and it's soft, that's when you know you're gonna get a little sweetness. What's really cool about her is that she keeps fruiting. We must be at least six weeks into fruiting right now. And I imagine there's about 50 to 60 fruit on this tree still, but now they're starting to hang on better and they're getting darker, redder, and sweeter. This little beauty is called the Creek Plum. It's also known as the river plum and the thicket plum. Now, several native plum trees have the name, common name of thicket plum. She grows to approximately eight feet tall, grows in zone six to nine. Generally, it grows like a shrub, but we're training her to be more upright and that requires some tensioning on the trunk like the American plum, it fruits for a very long time and then it goes through like this iteration of dropping fruit and then the ones that remain kind of hang on the tree pretty well and the fruit gets really red. 
Now it's not unusual to have these little spots on the plum. We're a no nonsense operation, so we're gonna keep it real. Doesn't stop me from eating it. A little tart doesn't really have a plummy back end to it. It's tart, it's crispy, it's juicy. And I think it'd be good for like a pie. It's a fantastic native plum tree for a small area. It sort of takes care of itself. Very little pruning is needed. Loaded with flowers in the spring. She'd just be absolutely full. Lots of fruit development. And because of her smaller stature, that's the reason we have her positioned right here along her driveway. This is a Chickasaw plum tree, and it goes by a lot of different common names. I'm not even gonna try to remember what they are. She grows in zones five to nine. Its height can be from 10 to 20 feet tall. Because these trees are very highly varied, it may grow shrubby, or it may grow as an excellent single accent trunked tree. I experimented with soapy water to get rid of some aphids and that was a blown experiment because the leaves got really kind of funky and ratty looking. She's recovering and getting nice leaf action going right now so that's a good sign and she'll continue to grow and continue to produce more and more fruit. This beauty right here is the Mexican plum, another native probably guess that it's more or less native to southern Texas, northern Mexico. That's Mexico for us Americans. I really love the shape. It grows as a straight up tree, very indicative of a cultivar plum tree and very nice like limbs going off to the side. She's a very easy tree to prune, very easy tree to train. They're all easy to prune, but they don't all train real well. And when I say train the limbs, I mean having these limbs go out sideways so you have fruit, for example. Now this one is weighted down a bit by the fruit that's on it, but you're gonna have that fruit right here where you can grab it. Speaking of the fruit, so you can clearly see that the Mexican plums are very green. There are some just starting to turn color. As you can see right there, she's still quite green. What I immediately taste is less tart and more plum-like flavor. This is another one that's starting to turn color. And what I want to emphasize, it has a distinct flavorful plum flavor and very low on the tartness. And I'm pretty sure when I bite into this, part of it's going to be green. Now, I'm not saying eat green plum, but if she's already low tart, hint of sweetness and plumish tasting, I think this Mexican plum is going to be the bomb. The leaves of the Mexican plum are darker and glossier. So it's an attractive tree in that way. It's an attractive tree if you want a native plum that grows like a regular cultivar plum tree. It'll grow up and out sideways. And this turns into a nice shady area on a hot sunny day. This little beauty is a beach plum. She's also known as a seaside plum and a sand plum. They grow native in sand dunes here in the East Coast. She's in a pot. We haven't found her final location. And I want to give you an idea just how small she is. They grow to be no more than six feet tall. Haven't tried the fruit. These have not flowered yet. They're at least four years old. Unlike most native plums, this one needs a pollinator. So we're gonna plant them in clusters of three and hopefully there'll be some cross pollination between two clusters of three beach plum. It grows vigorously, but not insanely fast. I want this close up here so you can see that she's far more pest and disease resistant. This is really a standout native plum tree because it's 
got a naturally dwarfing habit, very attractive leaves, very low risk of disease and pests. In fact, I have no pests or disease on her. Because she's small, she's very easy to prune, very easy to maintain. We really look forward to trying the fruit on a beach plum. Well, I hope you found a plum tree that fits your yard because whether you need a tall tree, short tree, wide tree, skinny tree, there's a tree, a native plum tree that's gonna fit your yard. Check out our website where I feature all 15 of North America's native plum trees. Be mindful that these trees are very drought tolerant. They are designed to live in North America. It's a fantastic tree for wildlife habitat, wildlife food, visually appealing. The flowers on these things are spectacular in spring. Very easy to maintain, very easy to prune. Of course, it matters which of the 15 native plum trees you find. Some native plum trees are very difficult to find, by the way, so if you can't find them, don't jump off a bridge. It is a norm. Some of the rarest of the 15 native plum trees, some of the rarest are in Texas, and they grow in very small, from what I understand, very small regions within Texas. The wild plum tree is worth our time planting because of its positive characteristics, because it represents a native tree and just damn good for the environment. I hope this video was helpful. Please subscribe to the channel, like this video. Take care of yourself. Take care of someone else if you can. Love you. Bye.